you look to the left, you'll observe a Charlie, native to this living room, actually using a pattern. Now, Charlies are traditionally known for a rather haphazard style of sewing called winging it. And oh dear, it appears she's a bit skittish and we frightened her off. It's sewing day! I feel like I should pause and put batteries in everything before something dies and I regret it. Would I regret that? I would. So a while back, somebody commented on one of my videos saying that they would love it if I would explore different kinds of fabric and what projects you should use them for, what items of clothing they're best for. And I was like, that'd be a great idea if only I knew something about fabric. Because y'all, fabric information does not want to stay in my head. Even as just an embroidery artist, I tried to learn more about fabric. You should know about different kinds of materials and the different weaves and, you know, stuff. I watched videos, I walked around an entire Joann's and touched every fabric and then read on the bolt what it was. It doesn't want to stay in my head. Like my brain rejects information about fabric. That being said, I had a video idea in mind already that I think somewhat fulfills the brief. My plan was to take a single pattern and make it three different times out of three different types of fabric to see which one looks best, how each one drapes and falls, which one was the easiest to sew or had any problems with sewing. And I think this is the way that fabric information will finally lodge into my brain. I need like a hands-on, I've done it myself example. And I think this could be it. And hopefully that'll be helpful to you guys because I don't think everyone wants to make the same dress over and over again just to see how different kinds of fabric fall. But I am here for you and I'm gonna do it for you because that kind of stuff is just right up my alley. And shock of all shocks, I have actually planned ahead for this video. I do still have to go to the store, but you know what? It's progress. So, wait here. <laughs> so first of all, I do have a pattern. This is actually kind of the pattern that inspired me to do this in the first place because I love it. It is like a drawing of a dress, so we'll see how it turns out, but it has a lot of elements that I like. I'll be doing the full skirt version because, obviously, designed for lightweight woven fabrics and stable knits. Oh, pattern. We're already not doing that. Broadcloth crepe and wool jersey. No. Unsuitable for obvious diagonals. Well. Pullover dress has continuous self-bias binding for neckline and sleeve hems. I don't know what that means. This is still only, what, my second time using a pattern? Semi-fitted bodice cut on crosswise grain. Ooh, there's another thing that I cannot get to stay in my head or like register at all. The grain of fabric, I get the concept and yet I don't. Bias cummerbund with stay. No idea. What does it mean with stay? I know what stays are, but what is just one stay? And side zipper. I wanted a dress that has a zipper already in it because I'm gonna be using some stretchy fabrics and some non-stretchy fabrics. And I felt like it would be easier to not put in a zipper that's already in the pattern than to put in a zipper that's not in the pattern. So I wanted like a lightweight cotton, and then I wanted like a sturdier cotton that has like a stiffer drape. I was considering going all the way to like, here I am not knowing fabric terms, brocade? Or is that a type of trim? I don't know, like that heavy kind of fabric you might make like drapes out of or something. But I didn't go quite that far. And then for the third fabric, I wanted a knit. So I wanna see sort of light and non-stretchy, heavier and non-stretchy, light and stretchy. Yes. So first up, I have some cotton, maybe. I'm not sure if there's enough of it. Because of the full skirt on this dress, it does require like four and a half yards of fabric, I think. This is a rather large sheet, but it might still be cutting it close. I have to go to the store anyway because I don't have thread that matches the next two fabrics. I might see if I can find some super duper clearanced fabric that falls in the same lightweight woven fabric range in which case this one's gonna get dumped. Then we have the 
lightweight knit category. I have a buttload of this because I found it on like 80% clearance at Joanne and I was like, okay, I'll just buy everything left. And then the third fabric is the slightly heavier one. It is a cotton twill and it is so cute. It is still pretty light and thin, but it definitely has a different feeling and a different drape than the cotton that I already have. Okay, so that's the deal. I'm going to run out to the store and then we're gonna get sewing. Boom. Well, that took longer than um, intended. I can't really say it took longer than expected because did I expect to get totally distracted with the clearance rack of fabric? Of course I did. Hi. Good sits. Y'all, I saved over $220 today while um, unnecessarily spending money. Go me. I ended up getting quite a bit of stuff that is completely irrelevant. We'll just set those aside. Got some more bobbins so I can stop layering colors. I also got several pieces of material, all of which I'm very excited about and only one of which matters for today. Welcome back. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. This delightful fabric, which is, does it smell good? Covered in um, teapots and cupcakes and little birds and mushroom houses. And oh my God, it's so cute. It's a lightweight cotton and I got six yards of it. So this is now going to replace the bed sheet as my lightweight cotton woven first option of fabric. Yeah, that was pretty much my my point here is this is the new fabric, although this is the other fabric that I got. It is a knit, similar to the style of knit that I was going to use already, but it has fruit with faces all over it. Fruit with faces. I think this might be replacing the knit fabric too. So these are the final choices for our three fabric. We have a lightweight woven fabric, this one being cotton. We have a heavier woven fabric, not too heavy, but sort of a medium weight, I would call it. This one is a cotton twill. And finally, a lightweight knit. I forgot to check if this is cotton or polyester, but I think it was actually cotton. Let the sewing commence. As usual, we begin this project with an attack on the vacuum. Then it was time to dissect this pattern. First, literally, with some of the worst scissors I didn't know I still had. Then, metaphorically, with some of the most confused brain cells I did know I have. Why does it always say to baste and then immediately after to stitch? I have learned what a stay is, though. See, like, this one doesn't say to baste it, it just says to stitch it. Why baste sometimes and not always? <laughs> it's really hard. All right, well, I just gotta try it, right? <laughs> With not to do but blaze ahead, I proceeded to procrastinate by taking the puppy out for a walk, which turned into a play date, which required a bath, which led to about 10 straight minutes of this drama. And at last, at five o'clock at night, I started dress number one and immediately hit a snag. Here's a little thing I hadn't noticed. The delightful pattern on this fabric has a specific direction. It runs long ways down the fabric. And all of these pattern pieces are meant to be cut on a fold, but are also wider than 45 inches, which means you have to lay them out horizontally on your strip of fabric. That means I'd have to cut each piece, the skirt front and back and the bodice front and back separately and sew the two pieces together down the center to make it into the whole piece. When I thought it was just the skirt that would be affected this way, I was gonna go for it. It's not great, but you know, I'll make it work. But placing a seam down the center front of the bodice is not only something I don't wanna do, it's also something that just won't look good. The only other option was to have the pattern facing sideways on the entire dress. Not an option I like. 
So it's back to the bed sheet, yay! Cutting out a pattern on the floor should be considered a sport. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be sore from this tomorrow, and there's still two more of these to go. I also cut out pockets. This dress does not have pockets in it naturally, but I've sworn to always get at least one pocket in anything I make from now on, so I think I can easily add one. Hopefully I can get a second one on the zipper side of the dress, but I'm not as sure about that. Sore back and slightly sweating, it could only be time for one thing. Ice cream break. In fact, I almost just gave up for the night because the puppy needed some love and attention and, well, I wasn't feeling it, honestly. But it was still light outside, so that was a no-go. This is why I get so much less done in the winter. Darkness equals quitting time. And motivating myself to continue working after the sun has gone down is, oof nearly impossible. But once I got started, it wasn't actually too hard. I mean, I immediately sewed in completely the wrong place. But yeah, not too hard. Just a bit of gathering and stitching and bing bing boom, the front piece was done. The back has a bunch of weird darts, particularly in the end of the sleeve, but also not rocket science or anything, so huzzah. Then the whole thing gets stitched together, leaving room for a zipper on one side, and ta-da, we have a bodice! And I can already tell this is not going to be my favorite rendition of this dress. I could barely get this bodice on, even without the skirt and the zipper, and it was even harder to get back off. This is why I love knit. It was pretty late by this point, but I got started on the handmade bias tape thing. You sew this thicker strip of fabric into a loop and then cut it in like a spiral shape and it makes one long piece of thin fabric. Cool trick, I guess, but I feel like it wouldn't have taken much longer to just cut out one long thin piece of fabric, right? I get the weird feeling that this has something to do with grain line. Let me, um, get out the iron and then I can sit in iron. I pulled out the iron and touched up the bodice before bed, but the rest of dress one is going to have to wait for day two. The next morning, I needed to repot my rhubarb, which turned into rearranging the entire tiny garden, but I still managed to get to the sewing machine before, you know, 5 p.m., so it's all good. Things went fairly smoothly after that, I suppose. I mean, the whole bias tape thing is weird to me. I thought it was supposed to be fully turned inside and then flipped under so all the raw edges were hidden, but then it was like, what do you sew it to? Then I realized you're supposed to fold it in half, so you actually have like this little border around the neck and sleeves, and that's all well and good. Now there's something to slip stitch it to on the inside, but it also left a raw edge just sitting there on its own. Nowhere to go. Moving on to the zipper, well, you all know how I feel about zippers. side opening edges together along seam line between large circles as shown. Yeah, the instructions in the pattern just made no sense to me. What? I think it's saying to sew it closed, baste it, put the zipper in and then cut the stitching so it's open again. Oh look, we're uneven. Am I surprised? Nope. I hate zippers. I'm just anticipating this being a disaster. I don't know. Right. This is not gonna end well. Not bad-ish. Ow! It's kind of working. So I just sort of winged it on putting the zipper in based on past experience, and it's a little wonky. It's not what I'd call clean, but it's in, and by some miracle, this thing fits me too. So dress number one is done, huzzah, and I'm about to start cutting out dress number two, which is going to be the knit one. But I just wanted to take a moment and give my initial thoughts on 
this dress itself, not the fabric so much. We'll talk about the different fabrics at the end. I like the dress more in theory than in creation. Like I still really enjoy the final look of it. It's pretty much what I expected, pretty much what the drawing looks like. It's really cute. Okay, I like it. Do I sound like I'm trying to convince you that I like it? Or convince myself that I like it? No, really, I do. I do like the dress. It's like the construction of the dress that I'm not thrilled with. So my main complaint is that this dress is not lined at all, not even just the bodice, which in knit, I don't think will be that much of a problem because knit doesn't like fray as much on the inside and it's softer anyway. But in this, you know, cotton or possibly polyester, like a woven material, it's not great. Like it's not comfortable on the inside. You have all these gathers on the waistband and it's just up against your skin. There's nothing smooth on top of it to cover it up. So it's a little, not really scratchy, it's just like not super comfortable. And then on top of that, if you don't have a serger, like I don't, and you don't feel like figuring out the extra seam allowance you would need to do French seams on this, which I don't, then you just have raw edges everywhere. If I, you know, wear this a lot or wash it normally, cause I don't really like doing specialty washing on things, it's gonna start fraying. Like all the edges are gonna start fraying. I do have a lot of extra fabric for this knit. So I could try lining it with the knit, even though I don't feel like it's as necessary on the knit fabric. But if I figure it out on the knit fabric, then it could be easier to do later with other fabrics. Let's go. This fabric smells like Joanne. Someday I'll have a cutting table where you can't reach it. This one pretty much went off without a hitch. Oh, this is exciting. I had plenty of fabric. It was much faster to cut out now that I get the gist of it all. If I cut out two. I even cut out two more bodice pieces to be the lining and had enough left over to make, uh, I don't know, a skirt or something. Just of the top part. I think I'm gonna try it. Round two. What a rip. And we have the front piece, the back piece, the front lining, the back lining, the outside bodice all attached, the lining all attached. Then it was time to attach the lining to the bodice, which I did around the neck. It's a bit chunky right now, but I think once I press it all down and line up the sleeves, then of course add the bias tape or whatever it is to the sleeves and slip stitch the bottom of the lining to the inner bodice, yeah, I think it'll be good. It definitely was not necessary with this fabric, so I almost scrapped the whole thing, but it didn't feel too heavy or annoying, so uh, this seemed like a good time to practice. Only my back was killing me and it was late and the puppy needed more love and attention always more love and attention. So tomorrow will be a good time to practice. The next morning I did the necessary hand sewing over my coffee and here is the finished bodice. The skirt is going to be a breeze. And it was. Whole thing fits too, although it's a little tricky to get on without a zipper just because of that hard waistline. <sighs> Round three. Are you ready? I know the drill by now. We know the drill by now. Front, back, bodice, bias, boom. Get those pockets into the skirt, gather it up, sew it on. And here we are back in the land of the zippers. Great. But thanks to a bit of hand sewing, I actually got this one in pretty dang cleanly if I do say so myself. I mean, you can see it, but there's no holes or gaps.
Is it not delightful how just adding a petticoat underneath a dress can instantly turn you into a magical fairy princess or a chick in the 1950s going to prom? Okay, what have we learned? That is the question. So first, there's the things that I learned about the dress. My main issue is the lack of lining on the inside. This is definitely the worst fabric for that lack of lining because it frays really easily. My second issue with this dress is these drape sleeve things where you have like the line right here instead of a separate piece for the sleeve. I love that style of sleeve in knit, but in anything non-stretch, it's not really the best. It's a little gapey in areas. It can't fit you super close because if it did, you wouldn't be able to move at all. I do want to continue this project in the future and try making the same dress with multiple kinds of fabric, but I don't wanna use this dress pattern again. So on that note, if there's a specific style of dress or maybe an entirely different kind of clothing altogether that you'd like to see this sort of experiment done in, or if there's specific fabric styles you'd like to see me compare and contrast, let me know in the comments because I do want to continue this experiment. I do feel like I learned quite a bit about these type of materials, mostly because they don't necessarily work great with this pattern. So let's talk the three different fabrics. First up, I wanted to note what I did differently to the pattern with each one. The first fabric, which I think, I think, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it would be either a broadcloth or a poplin. We'll call it a poplin. On the poplin dress, the only alteration that I made was adding the pockets. On the knit dress, the alterations were adding the pockets and adding the lining to the bodice. And then on the twill dress, I added pockets, I lowered the neckline in the back, and I added four inches to the hem so that it would be long enough to go over the giant petticoat. I feel like sitting in the chair with this makes it look like it's a full on like French Revolution dress or something. Here are my final thoughts on the three different fabrics and what it was like to actually wear them. First up, I wanted to note how hard or easy it was to get this dress on and off in the different fabrics, keeping in mind that both of the non-stretch versions have zippers and the knit one does not. For the poplin, I'd give getting it on a two, getting it off a four. When you cross your arms like that in this dress, you're stretching the fabric out so much in the back that you're basically locking yourself into it, even with the zipper open on the side. So yeah, that one was not easy to get back out of. The knit, I would give it a two to get on and a one to get off. It was a little harder to get on just because that waistline doesn't exactly stretch. Getting it off, however, was really, really easy. I didn't have any trouble because with all the stretch involved, you could easily do this. It worked great. And on the twill, I would give it a two for getting it on and a three for getting it off. It's actually easier to get on and off than the other non-stretch version because I lowered the neckline in the back. So there's a bit of a bigger hole there. Then I ranked the fit of the dress, my ability to move in the dress and how comfortable the dress was. The poplin got threes across the board. It's very average. The fit is not bad in the waistline. It fits well as far as like zipping it up. It's exactly the right like tightness that you'd want it to be. Huzzah for the sizing being right. But again, this top part just, it's a little weird. The neckline doesn't settle where it's supposed to go immediately. You have to adjust it a lot. You have to like spin the sleeves to get them to be right and have the seam on the right side. It doesn't fit wrongly, it just doesn't fit well. It's not super uncomfortable, but it's not super comfortable. And then it's not hard to move in. I had a fairly good range of movement. It came with like raising my arms over my head that made it more difficult. Dress number two, the knit one, I give the fit a two. Yes, actually less than the other one because the whole thing actually ended up a little too big. And I think that was necessary in order for me to be able to get it on without a zipper. Still, I have to admit, it doesn't technically fit as well. One thing I did like better about sort of the fit to it is because I added the lining to the neckline, it actually lowered the whole neckline. Whereas this boat neck typically is like hitting you in the jugular. Adding the lining to it meant that I took off 
like three eighths of an inch. So it just gave me a little bit of a lower neckline in the front and the back, and it doesn't feel as constricting sometimes. However, despite getting a two for fit, it gets a five for both comfort and movability. It's very easy to move around in and it is very comfortable. That knit is like a little bit thick and a little bit soft. It's really a comfortable dress to wear. And finally for dress number three, I give it a two for the fit. I did smaller seam allowances on the sides than I did on the poplin one to try to give it a little more space and yet it's a little bit tighter. And then the top part, mm, nope. I mean, again, it's just how the pattern is made. It's not necessarily that it's sized wrong or anything. It just does not fit normally. Like, look at that. I can't move my arms here. It also gets a two for comfort and a two for movability. And then I rated the swooshiness. And this one, kind of surprised me a little bit. I would actually say that the poplin is a three on swoosh. Because the poplin is light and airy, it does still have a decent like swoosh and flow to it. Then I would say that the knit actually ranks like a two, just because knit hangs straight. It doesn't want to flare up as much. It doesn't have really any lightness to it. It is comfortable, but you don't really wear knit to have like a swooshy skirt. But the one that surprised me is this one. I thought, especially because I made the skirt longer, that it would be the swooshiest. I was like saying it was gonna be a four to a five before I even tried it. It actually isn't. I think because the fabric is stiffer, it drapes really nicely when you're standing still, but when you spin, it doesn't have that same like, je ne sais quoi. No, literally, I don't know what to call it. It just doesn't feel quite the same. So actually, this one gets a two on swoosh as well. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on our three basic fabrics, poplin, knit, and twill. I learned some fun stuff on these dresses. I learned how to do a little continuous bias. I got some good practice on doing a rolled hem. I'm normally very slow about it and I do the entire hem, the first fold up, sew it all, the second fold, sew it all, instead of just folding it double as I go. It actually reminds me, it's a little late in this video for a random side story, but here we go anyway. I once interviewed for um, Disney World costuming and I had no idea what I was getting into or like what level of skill they were seeking. But yeah, in the interview, I'm pretty sure I said to the woman like, oh, I'm really good at hemming. And she was like, we have a machine that does that. That's when I realized that I was in over my head. I feel like it's needless to say, but I did not get that job. But I had to do a timed sew test in that interview. And I was really proud of myself because I completed the garment in the allotted amount of time. I didn't do it right, apparently. It looked decent, but it was supposed to have a lapped zipper in it. And I did not know what that was. And to this day, I still don't know what that was. Considering I had like, almost no sewing skills to the point where I was bragging about being able to hem something. I was really proud of myself for completing it. I feel like I didn't like completely humiliate myself. Although in, in the opinion of the woman who interviewed me, I probably did. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up because I am hungry, man. This was fun. I hope you learned something from it. I definitely learned something from it. And again, if you have any input on when I do this again, what I make, what fabrics I use, etc., feel free to tell me. I always love to hear your suggestions.